These are the things that are needed for Dajjal to have his power. Because when Dajjal comes out, do you know that there's going to be thousands of ulama of this ummah that will actually follow him? Two categories are mentioned. Ulama, scholars of this religion, of this religion Islam, are going to follow him. And women of this religion, in Sahih Ahadith, women in their numbers will follow him. And there, there will be a large section of the, of the followers of Musa alayhi salam, they will follow him. Look, there's two things about Dajjal. There's a Dajjalic system and then there's the actual Dajjal. So if anyone tells you the whole thing is just a system, it's not. It's a system, yes, but it's also the actual Dajjal. The question is, has Dajjal already come out? Because you get two different narrations, you get two different types of narrations. And the way the, the, way the scholars have combined them is that Dajjal is alive and is already trapped or Dajjal will be born after 30 years to parents who will not have children but he's going to be a very strange looking human being and what happens is before Dajjal comes there's an entire system that, that supports the whatever Dajjal is going to have now I don't know look I don't know whether the technological things that we've got advancements we've got whether that's going to be at the hands of Dajjal or whether Dajjal will have other type of powers but it looks like the technological world we're going through that all those devices are going to be the Dajjals. There's going to be some serious advancement in science. The Dajjal need, you know, the Dajjal will claim to be God. But the people who will claim, who will say that he's God, most likely are those people who believe in the advancement of the development they've made as a human race on this earth. Now there's two categories of ulama here who said, look, listen, listen carefully, okay? Some have said we're gonna go back to the days of horses and carts because every description Rasulullah gives is actually either of you know a, a horse or a donkey or he talks of a sword and so on. So some some say that we're gonna go back to that. Others say no. When Rasulullah said that the is going to ride a donkey and the donkey's ears are going to be really, really large and long. And between one end of the ear to another end of one ear is going to be 40 cubits. And he's going to fly on this. And that seems more like a jet. So they've said these are metaphors. And Rasulullah never actually meant the donkey. Because when he's talking to his people, how is he supposed to say a plane? How is he supposed to say a jet? How is he supposed to say that? And that's why he gave these metaphors or he spoke about it. But it's for us to understand that that's what he meant. Now, again, I can't decide on this. But I am inclining more towards the fact that the technologies we've got today are all going to be in favor of the things that Dajjal uses. So what is he going to do when he comes down? Before he comes out, there is an Imam Mahdi that comes before him. Now again, there are many ahadith about, the, about Imam Mahdi. The problem with all the ahadith about Imam Mahdi is either the hadith is sahih, as in it's authentic, but the description within the hadith about the individual Mahdi is not clear. It's obscure. Or the, the hadith is very clear describing Imam Mahdi, but the narration is weak. It's not authentic. And that's the problem we have with all the ahadith with Imam Mahdi. But what will happen is that there's going to be these minor signs around us are going to get worse, worse, worse with these little minor signs. And Imam Mahdi is the bridge between all the minor signs and the major signs. So let me let me go over it again. Remember I told you there's three types of signs. What's number one? Come on, let me see if you're awake. Signs that have appeared one off and then are going to build. What's number two? Signs that appear and they grow, they grow, okay? In their size and quantity and so on, but the same sign, but they grow. And the third one is the 10 major signs. So out of the 10 major signs, the Jali is the first. And between the second set of signs or the minor signs, and the major signs, Imam Mahdi is the bridge. So when he appears, he's going to be the beginning of all the, you know, all the 10 signs that are about to come. And Dajjal is going to be the worst of all the 10 signs that, that Allah Azza wa Jalla would have brought on this earth. Now what happens is there's going to be a lot of things, subhanAllah al a lot of things that are not going to appear the same. So for example, the Prophet has said to us, You kadhabu sadiq wa yusaddaq al kadhib. Subhanallah. He said, Near the end of time, the one who's speaking the truth will be rejected as a liar. 
and the one who's saying the lie is going to be accepted as the truth. Can you see how what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said? These are the times that we're living in. Things that you were accustomed to for all the millennia of, of human history are about to take a turn. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talked about children that are going to be filled with rage. He said, Al-Mataru qayza wal-waladu ghayza. The rain is going to be acidic and the children will be filled with rain. Now you take that recipe away, you, you put it in your life because before the jal comes, the, the kids are going to be raised. In fact, the jal is going to be a youngster. The hadith is shab. It says a young man. Now what shab? Shab is in Arabic is someone between the age of 12 and 25. Most likely the jal is going to be someone that is going to be just under the age of 25 or something. He's going to be a young man and he's going to have a great influence. This description is clear in the ahadith where his right eye is blind. It's swollen like a grape that has gone off. His left eye is defected, but he sees through that. On his forehead is kaf fa ra, but only the believers see it. Only the believers will see it. We don't, we don't know how, but only the believers see it. His neck is going to be thick larger than you know the proportion of his head and his body his body is going to be very wide very wide and his legs are going to be quite wide apart okay and the jal has got this way of making people be struck with awe as soon as he looks at you don't want to come in front of the jal and the jal what, what are his powers what will he do well when he comes out he's going to reign the earth for 40 days this is in sahih muslim 40 days the first day of his 40 days is one whole year. The one day, one 24 hours, is going to be 365. And the Sahaba was struck, they were amazed. Bless of Allah. One day is going to be one year. And the Prophet Sallallahu then explained. But he said, one day is going to be like one year. The next day is going to be one month. The next day, one week. Then, and then he said, after that, the rest of his days are going to be like normal days. If you make your calculation of that, he will be on the earth for one year and two and a half months, approximate. But that one day, the first day, my God, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to fly across the whole of the world. And he, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that he will have this donkey that he will fly with. And, he, and subhanallah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ma'ahu kullu lisan. He has every language with him. Every language with him. I just heard, you know, last year or something, uh, the, the Japanese have got this device that you put on your shoulder and you walk around with it in your business, you know, daily activities. And what you do is you speak. And as soon as you speak, this device will translate to whatever language you want. And then they speak and then their one translates to whatever language they want. So, Allahu Alam, I don't know if it, if it means that he has some kind of other way of, of talking to people. He has that, but it looks like he might have that device. The next thing that Jal does, he comes to a people, he says, I am your Lord. They say, how do you prove that you're, you're our Lord? He says, the rain, I'm going to make it stop. If he wants to make the sun come out because the clouds are, are, are gone, or if he wants to make the sun never shine over it because the clouds are going to be there, okay, he can do that. Now, if you look at modern, modern technology, there, there's cloud seeding that some countries use. You send a jet with certain chemicals into the air, and they send these chemicals out and you can create cloud. That is already out. The Jal will, will then tell those people that I am your Lord, believe me. And people will be so dumbed down that they're going to believe in him as an actual God. They'll take him as a God. One of his powers is that he's able to cut a man in half and the two pieces fall down to two sides. Because he will say to the man, do you believe me I'm your Lord? What's the proof? He says, well, how about if I was to cut you in half? and then join you back again. And he'll have a whole crowd of people. So he said, go ahead then. So he points at him and he cuts him in half. Two halves fall aside. And the Dajjal then walks between the two halves, comes back again, then points back at it, and the two halves join again, and the man starts laughing. Do you know that they've got right now technology with a laser that can actually cut a limb without having any blood pouring out. Do you know that this is going 20 years back, they've already made a laser that can cut off sound in a room. It's already available. So if you're in a nightclub with a lot of sound, high sound, and you want to have a table here that you and your friends speak, 
with just you two there, you can have that laser that beams around you. And what it does, it cuts off all the sound, the nightclub sound of, you know, the, you're talking about the music that is at a high decibel. It cuts it all out and you can have a nice conversation. Now, I don't know again if he's going to have all that at his hands, but you can see where this is going. He comes to a Bedouin and he says, you're going to believe me, I'm your Lord. And he says, why should I believe you? He says this in front of a crowd. He says, how about if I was to bring your parents back alive? He says, really, seriously? Bring them alive, you know. Who would not want their parents to be alive? So the child goes to his grave. And then, seemingly, he brings his parents back up from their grave. And they say to their child, Oh child, believe him, he is God. Now, as Rasulullah explained this, he said, فَشَيْطَانَانِ يَتَمَثَّلَانِ There will be two devils that will take the appearance of his parents. So his real parents are dead. But two devils have taken the appearance of two humans exactly like his parents and the devils speak out and the person believes is his parents and therefore he believes. There's going to be a lot of trickery he will use. In fact, his name Dajjal means the one who is a master at lying and a master at trickery. He will fool people. He will walk. When he walks, he will have two rivers with him. Now, we, haven't, we have got nothing to, to understand this right now. But very soon, I'm sure in a few decades time, whenever the time's going to come, we're going to see, ah, we can understand how this is going to happen. He's going to have with him fire and he's going to have with him water. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, his fire is water and his water is fire. So he will tell people, look, jump into the water. Don't jump into the fire. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, if you ever see the Dajjal with his fire and water, he said, go and jump into the fire. Because his fire is going to be cool water. And how many of us thought, this is a serious question. Am I going to be ready to jump into real fire that's blazing, that's hot? Am I seriously going to jump in there with Iman and say, My Prophet told me that this is going to be water. Am I going to be doing that? It's a serious question. Because people are not prepared for the Dajjal unless you have Iman. Unless you have Iman. So he comes, his first day, which is one year, he goes around pretty much the whole of the world. He can't enter Makkah, Medina. Some riwayat say there's a Masjid al -Tur. And there's also Masjid al-Aqsa, some include that. But many ahadith include Makkah and Medina because there are angels there guarding those um, cities and he can't enter that. But he will come to the outskirts of Medina. Rasulullah even pointed out that in the outskirts of Medina, there's going to be a white palace or a, he said a white building. He said a white building. Okay. Do you know right now that the current Saudi government is building a palace in the exact spot that the Dajjal is, is going to come to and he's going to stand there? And he's going to look at Medina and say, you know, the white city. If you look from that spot towards Medina Munawwara with all the lights at night time, it actually looks like a white city. So he comes, he stops, he's not able to enter. He's not able to enter Makkah Medina. But he's going to go pretty much around the world. And what he does is, he says, you believe me as a god. If you don't believe in him, fine. He's going to cut off your supplies of food, grain, whatever it is. He's going to completely destroy all your crops that you basically can't grow anything. He's going to have that technology. Do you know right now that there's a movement to try and only give you seed to grow one, things once, right? And, and if that is fully fledged system, and if that comes in his hands, then he's got the way to say that you can't have food for the rest of the year. Now, you've got a whole year to live. Sahaba was struck and they said, Messenger of Allah, how do we survive without food for a year? Ah, this is a serious question. Will you seriously say no food for one year? One year. And if you look at the hadith, I said to you, it's one year, two and a half months, the Dajjal will be around. So are you ready to survive without any food for one year, two and a half months? And the Sahaba said, how do we, how do we survive? And the Prophet ﷺ said a beautiful thing, which we need to do a lot right now, guys. This is the only way you're going to survive through the times that we're living in. He said, your food that day will be a tasbih wa tahleek. He said, your food that day is going to be subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. Your food that day is going to be remembering Allah. And if you don't believe in him, he's going to punish you. Like I said, فَشَرُّغَا إِبْنِ يُنْتَضَرْ The one of the worst of the most evil, you know, awaited things that he, when he comes around. And the Dajjal will have a large following, large following. And he will mesmerize the world with his power. And what are we supposed to do if Dajjal comes? The Prophet ﷺ gave us, you know, our protection. Now Rasulullah ﷺ has told us, Surah Kahf. In one narration it says, 
whoever recites Surah Kaf on Friday, you will have, you know, from one Friday to another Friday, you're going to get a lot of light. And many ahadith say that it's the first 10 ayats of Surah Kahf or the last 10 ayats of Surah Kahf. And some have said first 10 and last 10, whichever, it doesn't matter, or maybe both. And one narration says if you memorize the last 10 ayats of Surah Kahf, you're safe from the Dajjal. In one narration it says if you see the Dajjal, then straight away read the first 10 ayats of Surah Kahf and you'll be protected.